Now that we have some parkends patched into Artist, we can begin to program them into some basic cues. Cues are the method of playback within Artist. These are what we trigger at runtime to operate our lights. Cues can have an in time, a hold time, and an out time, as well as their own level control. A cue may just be as simple as setting a dimmer to 100%. It may also activate a chase, fan, or effect on a parameter. Cues can also call scenes and activate system commands, but we'll cover scenes and system commands in a later tutorial. Cues only have a single step, but through the use of cue lists, we can sequence cues. So let's program our first cue. We'll create a cue that puts all eight of our park ends to 100%. Firstly, make sure we're on the fixture tab of the main window with the stage pass group selected. We first need to select all of our park ends. To select a fixture, we can click on it so that the box has a red outline. To select them all, we could, if we wanted to, click on each one individually, but we could also use one of the selection shortcuts. If we click on all, all of the fixtures within this fixture group will be selected. It is worth getting to know the selection shortcuts as they really help save time, especially when working with large fixture groups. So now that all of our park ends are selected, we can go down to the parameters tab of the fixture control panel and drag the dimmer to the top. As you can see, the black squares now have a white gradient appear to indicate that the dimmer is at full. We can also see in the status panel that DMX channels 1 through 8 are outputting at 100%. One thing to now note is in the top right hand corner of each of our park ends, we now have a little flag icon up here. This means that the currently active attribute for this fixture group, in this case, the dimmer channel, have a value sitting in the programmer ready to be saved. When we move on to programming multi-attribute intelligent lights like moving heads, this becomes very important. To save the queue, we go to the programming control tab of the master window, make sure the queue list that we want to save the queue to is selected in the top drop down. We currently only have the default queue list one, so we'll save it there and we can click on new queue. In this box, we can select which of the flagged attributes currently in the programmer we're going to save to this new queue. With single attribute fixtures like park ends, it's not really relevant. But again, once we start programming intelligent movers, it is very important. For the moment, we're going to leave everything selected. Here we can give our queue a name. I'm going to call this all pars on. We then have the options to put some settings into our queue. I'm going to leave this as default for now and I'll show you where you can change it once the queue has been created. We can now save our queue using one of these two buttons. The first one saves our queue and clears all of the flags from our programmer. The second button saves our queue but leaves everything as it currently is in the programmer. This is useful if you are going to create more queues similar to the one you are currently saving, allowing you to just make the necessary changes without having to set up the entire look from scratch. For now, we will save and clear. As you can see, all the park ends have now gone black, the DMX values in the output monitor have returned to zero, and the flags have disappeared. If we now go to the queues tab of the main window, our new queue is sitting at the top ready for us. To activate our queue, we can click on the black box to the left hand side. The red light comes on to indicate the queue is active, and as you can see from the output monitor, we are outputting all eight of our DMX channels at 100%. Clicking back onto the fixture tab shows all of our park ends with a white gradient. Notice there is not a flag in the top right hand corner. Activating a queue does not put these values back into the programmer. If we now click New Queue, you can see from the tree on the left that there is nothing in the programmer to save. We can add some settings to our queue by going back onto the Queues tab and double clicking on our queue. 
So firstly, we have an on button that lets us activate and deactivate the queue from this box. The fader control lets us set a maximum level for the queue, as you can see from the output monitor. This is useful for tweaking dimmer levels during the operation of a show. The time control lets us set in and out times for the queue. The correct zero gives us a range of 0 0.02 of a second to one second. The correct one gives us one second to 10 seconds. Correct two, 10 seconds to one minute 40. And correct three, one minute 40 to 16 minutes 40. As you can see, when we vary the fader, the values on the in time A and out time C follow. We can also manually set these times to any value we wish to give totally customised in and out times. The red diagonal box means the queue will ramp or fade during the in and out times. By that I mean it will smoothly increase the levels up to the maximum and then smoothly decrease them. If we click it, it changes to a solid red box. This means it will step or snap to the queue values. In this mode, the time fader is used to set the queue hold time, or how long the queue will stay active for when run in an automated mode. The H box allows us to vary the point at which the in time and hold time and out time interact across the period specified by the time fader. As you can see, the steeper the line, the more time is allocated to the queue hold. The shallower the line, the more time is dedicated to the fade in, fade out. As mentioned, it is also possible to set your own customised in, hold and out times. Finally we have two checkboxes. With both of them deactivated, when we manually trigger a queue, it will ramp using the in time we get it and wait until we deactivate it. On deactivation, it will fade out with the out time that we have set. False hold means that whatever we set as the hold time will be used as the maximum amount of time the queue will remain on for until it automatically deactivates itself. So if I set a fade time of 3 seconds and a hold time of 5 seconds, and activate the queue. You'll see the queue fade in and then a bar scrolls across the hold time column lasting five seconds. Once it reaches the end, the queue deactivates itself and fades out. As I said, this is a maximum time. You can still manually deactivate the queue during the hold time and it will immediately begin its fade out. A queue using this kind of setting would be perfect for operating something like a smoke machine, where you'd want to be able to fire it and deactivate it manually, but perhaps have a maximum hold time of a few seconds to automatically deactivate the queue in case the operator isn't paying attention. False wait is a function used when sequencing queue lists, and we'll cover that in a later tutorial. Next time we will look at editing our queue. Yes.